Hello, my name is Mike Gogg, and welcome to my video on the Stream Writer class, which is part of my series on Windows programming with C Sharp. In the last video, we looked at how to find a whole bunch of different file information, directory information, how to list files, how to create folders and create files and all that stuff. So uh, we learned it all, looked at all of that. In this video, we're going to look at learning how to write to the files that we create or how to create files and write to them. Uh, we are going to use something called the Stream Writer. I talked about streaming uh, a couple of videos ago, how it's simply a flow of data. Well, the Stream Writer will take our, our stream or flow of data and write it to a file for us. Okay, So that's what we're going to utilize. We're going to utilize this thing called a Stream Writer. Uh, in this example, what I want to do is I want to give us the capability of of typing into a text box and then uh, hitting save or, or, or something along those lines and, and putting it into a file uh, one right after the next uh, so that in the next video we can look at reading that information back from a file. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my toolbox here and I'm going to add a button and I'm going to have a text box. And my text box will be there. My button will be here. Uh, my button is going to say, um, we'll say submit. That's fine. And my text will be um, txt to write. Text to write. Okay. Um, and this is fairly basic. I'll shrink it down here a little bit. And what we're basically going to do is we're going to type in some text in this box. We'll hit submit and we'll write it to a file. So I'll double click submit here to get my event handler. Uh, now, like in the previous video, uh, anytime we are working with files, we need system.io for input output, just like that. All right, and now we can begin working, okay? Uh, so the first thing I wanna talk about before doing anything else, there are three steps to working with files. Memorize these steps, they're fairly simple. But if you don't do any one of these steps, your program's not going to work right. All right, the three steps are open the file, work with the file, and close the file. All right, now that seems fairly mundane, and it is, but you'd be amazed how many times you'll forget it unless you just memorize that. All right, opening the file is basic. You can't work with a file unless you open it. All right, now depending on the type of file, some files lock when you open them. All right, which is why the last part is so important. So opening the files, you know, it's, it's very important. Working with a file, obviously you need to do something with a file or else there's no point. Uh, and then the third, closing the file. If you fail to close the file, it could stay locked. And if it stays locked on your computer, nothing can access it, all right? Uh, you'll get an access denied or whatever. You can't delete, you can't move it, you can't write to it. Uh, if you run the program and you don't close uh, the file when you close the program and then you run the program again, the program will not work because the file is still locked from the previous time uh, you're using it. So you have to, to open it, uh, you have to work with it, and you have to close it. Okay, uh, so let's let's look at this a little bit here. So we're going to go ahead and put in here a stream writer. All right, we'll call it my writer. And we'll say new stream writer. Now the best thing about the constructor of the stream writer is we're going to pass a path in here. And that path is, can be something we get from like a save file dialog. Uh, the path can be something that we type into a text box or something that we hard code. We're going to hard code it in this case. Now if the file doesn't exist, it'll make it for us. All right, so that's real nice. We don't have to say, hey, does the file exist first, then create it. The file doesn't exist, it will make it for us. Though that's just the file. It won't create any folders for us that we need. It'll just fail to create the folders. So we still would need to check, hey, uh, do the folders exist? All right, uh, but in this case, we're just going to assume we're fine. All right, so I'm going to say C colon uh, backslash backslash test backslash backslash test.txt. All right, just like that. Okay. And now if that file doesn't exist, it will create it. And if it does exist, it will just open it. This is the open part. You know, there's, there's three steps. This is the first step. So once that's open, we can write to it. And if you remember like the console.read line, console.write line, all right, uh, you'll be very familiar with this. So what I'm going to say is I'm simply going to say uh, my writer dot write okay uh, the text box one or not text box one txt to write dot text okay now it's important to note the difference between write and write line write uh, will not put a, a, a carriage return or a new line after it 
meaning there will be basically no space and everything will be on the same line. Write line drops it down to the next line after whatever it is it writes. Okay, just like console.write and console.write line. All right, generally speaking, we're going to be using write lines. I'm going to have a write in here just for the heck of it, just so we can see something. Uh, and then finally, I'm going to say my writer dot close. Very important to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and run it here. Now I have my C drive here with test. Test is empty, uh, and I am going to say hello world, and I will hit submit. Submit will open, create the file, and open it. I'll write to it and close it. Um, and then I look in here and I see hello world. All right, perfect. Now let's close this here, and I'm going to say how are you? Question mark, and submit. And I'll go ahead and open this, and I see how are you. Notice that hello world is no longer there. The file was truncated. What that means is what was in there got removed, and then what we were putting in there was placed there. All right, that's very important to remember that what was in there goes away. All right, unless we do something specific, but we're not there yet. So, um, so you'll notice that whatever we typed in there uh, disappeared. Okay, so let's. Let's stop running this here for a second. Um, there we go. Uh, and now what I want to do is if I come back here to my constructor, my writer equals new stream writer, and after the path, if I say comma true, all right, so I just added a true there. Let's run it again and see what that does. All right, uh, so the test in here, I'm going to delete it. Goodbye. And I will say hello world, submit. And here it is, and we see hello world. I'm going to say, how are you? Submit. And you will see, hello world, how are you? It did not truncate. That true in the constructor just says, hey, tack the information on. Don't erase what was already there. All right, so that's kind of important. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's delete that. And I'll go ahead and close this. I'll turn these into right lines. We'll rerun it. I will say, hello world, submit. How are you? Submit. I'll bring this back open. We see, hello world, how are you? All right, fantastic. Okay. Now, uh, when working with uh, stream writing, not a whole lot can go wrong, all right? Probably the, the worst thing that can happen is that the file already exists, but it's locked. All right, and that'll throw an exception and crash your program if you're not careful. All right, so what we may want to do, and I can show you this here. So let me just go ahead and uh, do that. We'll run it. I'll say, hello world. I'll spell that way wrong. Hello world, submit. How are you? Submit, and we crash. All right, it's being used by another process. We never locked it, or I'm sorry, we never unlocked it by closing it. Um, so that becomes very important. All right, so that's something we could have, uh, could run into. It is always, always, always important when you're working with a file to use a try catch block. Um, files uh, rely. And I really shouldn't just use a generic. We talked about why, but for simplicity, I am. Um, one second. Can't type and talk at the same time. Okay. Um, files uh, are part of the operating system, the underlying operating system. You don't have full control of that. In your, in your program, you have full control of things happening in your program. But let's say the user, i.e. The, the client or me in this case, I had a second window open and I was messing around with some files, right? Well, you, you can't rely on that, right? You can't rely on them not locking a file or deleting it while you're in the middle of writing it. or You have no control over what they do or what the operating system does with files, right? So we put it in a try-catch block uh, to prevent any particular errors from happening. All right, uh, so what I want to do is I'm going to show you something. One more thing here that, that's that's very important to do. Um, th we can take a look at this here. So right now we're in the try-catch block. I can go ahead and run this here. Um, you know, we can see the same old hello world, submit. 
you know, and it writes the hello world in the file or whatever. But what I want to do real quick is I want to open this file and block it intentionally and why and, and take a look at something. All right. So what I want to do is I want to first off I'm going to delete. No, I'll leave the file the way it is. I'm going to go ahead and add a second button. All right. What I'm actually, you know what? Even better. Even better. Ignore me. Okay. What I want to do here is this. Let's pretend. Let's pretend that writing didn't work because the file was locked or um, uh, we couldn't open it or whatever. Let's just let's pretend that happened. All right. We're actually already being alluded to a problem that's going on. Um, but let's pretend this happens. So I, what I want to do is, when I run this, right, we are going to see, um, it doesn't matter what I type in here, because we're going to get an exception, all right? And if you remember code interruption, what happens when this exception is thrown, and we're pretending the exception was part of this or part of this, and not actually a line here, but this exception is thrown, this last line never gets run. So we never close the file. We're almost ensuring that this becomes a continuous error. Right? We absolutely don't want that to happen. We want our programs to be more robust than that. We don't want to. We don't want to ensure that an error is always going on. We don't want to make. We don't want to say that. Hey, if this messes up, if this messes up, let's keep it messing up by never closing it. Right? That's a terrible thing. All right. So, you know, it would seem like if only there was a way we could have a block of code that ran all the time, no matter what. And of course, there is. All right. If you remember the finally block. The finally block always runs, no matter what, and it's the perfect place to close our file. All right. Now you might be thinking, um, of course, I'm I'm getting a little bit of a an error here. It's a scope issue, um, but I can just move this out here. Oh, of course, it doesn't have its <laughs> the value there either. Um, let's see if it's going to let me do any of this. There we go. Okay. So I create the the writer up here, but this is where we actually give it the value. This isn't the greatest way to do it. I'm just doing it quickly. We would have probably this put somewhere else and stored, and there might be multiple functions to use, whatever. Okay. This is just a local example to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. All right. So our writer you know, opens the file here, we write to it, and then whether we have an error or not, we close it here. Now you might be thinking, why not just put it after the catch block, right? Because if there's an error here, then the catch block runs, and then we could just close it after the catch block, right? That seems reasonable. And, you know, that is a reasonable thing to think. But remember that we don't always catch and handle exceptions at this level. Remember when we talked about exception handling, we talked about catching an exception uh, and then rethrowing it or not catching it at a level and, and then anticipating catching it at another level, we might leave this block, right? Error might happen here, right? We don't catch it. We leave this block and go somewhere else. And what happens after the catch block never runs. Finally, block will run. So the finally block is where we just say, hey, no matter what happens, win, lose, draw, we close this file. Prepens, prevents any perpetual issues from arising. All right. Real quick, before we finish this, um, this is what it says. And I'm going to go ahead and rerun this, and we're going to put some more meaningful. Um, oh, it won't let me do this because it won't let me pass in zero, uh, zero arguments into the constructor. What I'm going to do is, just for simplicity's sake, uh, I'm going to come back here and put it to be the way it was. I know that's not awesome, but I'm going to do it anyway because this video is already running a little bit longer than I wanted it to. Um, and I really want to just want to get it finished up here. So, okay. So we'll just put it back here. Remember that you'd normally want to close it in your finally block and maybe just open it up above or, or whatever. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and run it. And what I'm going to say here is, let's say, um, oh, before I do that, I'm going to delete my test file that already exists. And we'll say, uh, hello world, submit, uh, line 2, submit, um, 
in world. And I'm just doing this because I'm preparing us for the next video where we're going to read the stuff in. We want something a little bit better than junk. So this is what the file is going to be for the next video. All right, perfect. Uh, so we just uh, basically talked about writing to files, right? right using a stream writer, um, how to open files, uh, or how it will create a file if the file doesn't exist. Uh, it'll open it, you want to work with it, and then you want to close it. We talked about using it inside of a try-catch block. Um, we talked about putting true in the constructor so that you can concatenate the file instead of truncating the file. Um, and yeah, that should pretty much uh, uh, settle that for us. So uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about reading information in from these files.